want you to take a close look at these neighborhoods. You might live in one of these homes, go to one of these schools. What if I told you where you grew up could determine your future? And I started comparing it to everything like education and housing and health and, and it, all the social ills wound up in this north-south pattern of race and poverty. Jesus Hernandez is an urban sociologist in Sacramento with a PhD from UC Davis and over 30 years in the real estate industry. He has dedicated most of his life studying and understanding social problems that affect neighborhoods and quality of life. His passion came from his own experience, questioning where he grew up and why. I was born in Oak Park, uh, 3rd Avenue in Santa Clara. And I was wondering, like, why in the heck was I born here? Because it was pretty much the worst place in the county. I can remember in third grade that I wanted to study why this happened. We went to a spot a few blocks away from where he grew up in Oak Park. This area here is just south of Broadway, uh, census tract 28 to be exact, and it has one of the lowest uh, average incomes in the county. Let's compare this neighborhood to Land Park. In Land Park, the median household income is 141,000. In Oak Park, it's 44,000. In Land Park, nearly 70% have a bachelor's degree or higher. In Oak Park, it's 17%. And when you look at the median net worth, which is value of assets like home equity and cash minus debts, in Land Park, it's a little over $859,000. In Oak Park, it's $20,000. This area was also one of the hardest hit in the recession between 2007 to 2010, also known as the subprime mortgage crisis. People lost their homes. Unfortunately, those people do not live here anymore because of foreclosures. So you see this transfer of property going from poor people to investors. Now there's only 33% home ownership in this neighborhood. So how did we get here? How can neighborhoods two miles away from each other be so different? It's because of race covenants and the decisions made over the last century. Race covenants controlled who could live on a property. This is an example of one dated in 1941 from Southland Park. It states neither the whole or any part of said premises shall be sold, rented, or leased to any person or persons not of the white or Caucasian race. Beginning in 1913, the National Association of Real Estate Boards instructed its members not to contribute to race mixing through property sales. Race covenants were justified as a way to protect property values, and it became a way to create distinction and distance from what was perceived as less desirable residents, meaning people of color. Hernandez uses an X to describe the Sacramento region of the areas impacted by race covenants. From west to east. From Greenhaven to Granite Bay. Neighborhoods that kept out people of color with race covenants. And from north to south. From North Highlands all the way to Meadowview. Neighborhoods where people of color could live were redlined, a term that came from maps used by banks and appraisers to decide where to approve loans. Neighborhoods of color were marked red to mean they were high risk and not worthy of investment. So that you see this east-west pattern of affluence and this north-south pattern of racial concentration and poverty. Neighborhoods where people of color could not live continue to have decades of preferential treatment. So we're in Land Park. How does this compare to the other neighborhoods that you've been tracking? Well, uh, first, Land Park was one of these neighborhoods that was, especially this park here, was one of those things that helped us get out of the Great Depression, right? We put all this public money into it, building parks, building ball fields, bu building the golf course. Land Park and other neighborhoods with race covenants enjoyed the benefits of parks, public transportation, and even an abundance of trees. And as these trees mature and everything else, so that the neighborhoods, the values in these neighborhoods grow because they have that public investment. We built Sacramento City College right to support this, so it has all the tools that it needs to thrive. Based on Hernandez's research, the neighborhoods that had race covenants were not only wealthier, but healthier. Fewer cases of asthma and even COVID-19 compared to the neighborhoods to the north and south. Local developers used race covenants up until 1960. By that point, everything was laid out. Cities were shaped. In Sacramento, established neighborhoods were already defined, and the lack of investment in some areas became detrimental. 
we pull money out of those neighborhoods and put it into other neighborhoods. So when you devalue the places where people live, you actually devalue the people. And when you do that, that's how you create these biases that are so hard to undo today. Mm -hmm.